Hey, hey guys, it's Dr. Delvina, and we're back to Therapy Thursday. This time, this is for the ladies. I recorded a video and I posted on my social media about women and what they should do for their men, and I got all sorts of DMs and emails and oh my gosh, questions about, well hell, what should the men do for us, Dr. Delvina? You need to post a video about what the guys, what the men should be doing for us. So, this Therapy Thursday, we're talking about the men and guys, what you have to do for your women and how you keep your lady happy. So, if you have access to social media, if you don't mind, guys, go on, find me, Dr. Delvin, on Facebook or Instagram, DR, well, here it is, hey, Wu-Tang, Wu-Tang. So, and I want this to be a little interactive because we have a lot of ladies in the room. So ladies, give it up for yourselves. Clap it up, clap it up. Right? And I think, I know I'm not the only expert on the Vijay We got any other experts in here? Uh, no, no, not from the men. I want to know the ladies. Ladies, do we have experts on the vagina in the room? Okay, all right. See, so this is actually more than a one part, right? So this is the Chronicles. This Guys, if you saw what I posted, the Clint Taurus Chronicles. And a couple of people were kind of like, whoa. And I said, you know what? If we don't talk about these types of things, then you guys are going to continue to have issues, right? right? So we have to expose the things that people don't want to talk about so that way people learn and we're happier in our relationships. So that's why I do this, so we can talk about these things. And it's not just about sex and relationships and you know men, women. It's also topics about depression, anxiety, stuff like that, how to live better, how to feel happy. So I do have an exhibit, okay? So I brought an exhibit today and um, I think I'll have to share it, especially with the men. Now first, let me start by asking the ladies, how many of you know what your vagina looks like? Right here. <laughs> right? So have you looked at your vagina either this way or taken a mirror and placed a mirror underneath and looked, right? All right. So why do you think I'm asking the ladies if you've ever checked your vagina or looked at your vagina? You got to know what's going on. That's what, the, that's what the crowd is saying. You have to know what's going on. Because if you don't know what's going on, how will you help your partner, right? Because if you have no idea what makes you feel good, first of all, we need to start with the anatomy. How does it look? How does it feel? What's where? What are the parts of our vagina, right? Because if you don't know, you can't tell your significant other where to lick, where to touch, where to press, where to stick you won't be able to tell him all of those things, or her. So, I think I wanna hold up on this. This thing is so beautiful. Who thinks the vagina is beautiful? Me. I do. I, do too. I think it's I so do. beautiful. It is so beautiful. So, and let's, let's give, some, give up some other words for the vagina. What are some synonyms? What are some other names for the vagina? Pussy. Pussy. Who said pussy? Oh, I'm so proud of you. Yes, pussy. And do you know why I'm so proud that she said pussy? Does anyone know why? Because people are just, they can't say certain things. It's almost like when you're talking to a little kid, you know, when your kids were younger and you would say the squirt squirt, the pee pee, the wee wee, and you didn't teach them words like penis and vagina, right? So pussy, yeah. So be comfortable with saying certain things and describing them just how they are because it'll make you freer in the bedroom or in the kitchen, or in the bathroom, or the backyard, or the balcony, whatever, on the beach, in your car. <laughs> I don't know about these places. So yeah, you gotta be comfortable saying these words. So we have vagina, pussy, what else? Kitty cat. Kitty cat. Yeah. Coochie. Coochie. <laughs> Cookie. Where the coochie at? Okay. What is it? The pocket book. The pocketbook? The pocketbook. The okay, maybe I heard that once or twice. See, that's why we're sharing. What else? What's another word for a vagina? Sack? Box? Box. The box, that's right. Yeah. Yep. I think I've heard it when they ask to eat your box, right? So usually that's when they'll use that word. What else? Flower. What is it? Flower. Flower. Okay. Keeping it classy and pretty. Chocha. Chocha. Okay, what else? Coco. Pum pum. Coco. Yes. 
Coco. 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 Okay. Coco. So what do you say? So okay, we said a lot. If you were telling your significant other, I want you to lick my blank, what would you say? If you were asking your sig significant other, or telling actually, telling your significant other, why don't you lick my, how would you describe it? Would you say flower, lick my flower? No. Okay, right. So y'all stop faking the fun. What would you say? I'm going to say pussy. Pussy? So you would say lick my, okay. You need them to know what's coming from way down in there that, that you mean business. So saying certain words in the bedroom or when you're um, about to engage in intimacy, saying certain words, it uh, projects a meaning to your partner. They know that you mean business. So if you say, and nothing is wrong with saying flower or um, poom poom or cookie, there's nothing wrong with that. Um, but when you're being, you know, sexual and flirtatious and you guys are, you know, you want to get it on and you want to get in there and, and get that thing going, a lot of men want to hear, oh guys, I got some men in the room, hey! What do the men want to hear? I want to hear raw. Raw? I want to hear raw. I want to hear pussy. I want to hear all of the nasty stuff. Okay, so a gentleman said he wants to hear pussy and all the nasty stuff. Like, what else, guys? You never thought about it? So what turns you on? I never thought about it. What turns you on? What turns you on when a woman says what to you? Can you get that brother on camera, yeah, please? Come up, come up yeah, come up, come up here. Right. Yes. Y'all have it up for him, please. Y'all got to be holding him up. Yes. 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 So we're on Therapy Thursday, and I got a man here. And so the question was, what type of word would you like to hear from your woman when she's giving you a command or asking you to do something to her? And I asked you, are you tur what turns you on? What can she say to turn you on? And your response was? Words don't really turn me on like that, I, I guess. What, what turns you on? Um, the looks and kind of like the actions more than anything. Okay, so you know what? Point here is that you have to know your partner, right? You have to know what turns your partner on. You have to know what they like. So for you, you don't want to hear someone doing a whole bunch of talking. Oh, baby, give it to me like this. Give it to Yes, yes, and stick it in. You don't want to hear that. I mean, I, I don't mind it. It's, it's not a turn off, but okay. you know, it's not. That's not what turns me on. I okay. guess. Okay. Okay. So you want action. Right. Got it. Thank you. No problem. All right. So know your partner. Know your partner. Now, to the fellas, do you guys know the parts of the vagina? How many guys do we have in the room? Okay. So raise your hand, Dre. Let's, let's get some footage back there. Right. Raise your right, hand. I'm with some lights right here. <laughs> I'm struggling. Oh, that's true. That's true. Raise your up. hand if you know the parts or if you're comfortable with the parts <laughs> of the vagina. Don't bring me up there. Hey, the man over here. Okay. You know what? I should have had. I do have an exhibit. I have an exhibit, and I should have brought two. One labeled and one without the labels. So... And we don't have to know the clinical terms or the medical terms. We just need to be com comfortable with the parts. Um, sir, would you like to come up? Yes, please. You said you know the parts of the vagina. Wait, you know, uh, you said it too. No, both of you. How about both of you come up? Because he raised his hand also. Watch the pour, watch the pour. Yep. So have a seat here, sir. Please, yes. <laughs> it's Therapy Thursday, Dr. Delvina, and we are talking about what women want, and part one is about the vagina. Of course, we want a million things. There's a million things that can please us. We're easy to please, right, ladies? Aren't we easy to please? I ain't gonna lie. No, no. So women are easy. They make it work for it, yeah. Oh, say that again. They make it work for it. What? Women make you work to please them? Yes, facts. It's not easy. You gotta know you want to. Mm -hmm. It's not easy at all. Okay. So, something to be said for knowing your partner, right? Because every woman is different. Facts. Every woman is different. So, what one may enjoy and like the other, you gotta, you gotta change it up, right? Facts. Do you have a woman? Yes, 
Yes, I do. Do you know what she likes? I guess I do. Valerina right there, yeah. Oh, hi. So tell us a few things that she likes. Uh, she likes when I listen. How about that? I like that. In detail. Okay. That's actually the perfect answer. I'm not even going to go past that. Right? Ladies, did you like that answer? Yeah, it says a lot. It says a lot. When, when I listen in detail. How old are you? 27. I knew you were kind of young. So you have it figured out already. Because women, that's what we want. We want someone who will listen and listen to the details, including by text, too. Oh, yeah, you know how to listen to Big Bro. That's what it is, son. You already know. All right, we taking credit, Dre. Okay, sir. Are you long? Hi. Nice to meet you. How do you please your woman? Well, like you said, listening, cuddling. You know, women like to be touched. They like to be held. You know, and then we can get to the other stuff. But it it has to start with that. First. Foreplay is essential, right? And a lot of people will skip, a lot of men will skip the foreplay. Now let's jump into what we're here for. All right, y'all ready to play this game? Okay, make some noise. We're gonna play this game. <laughs> All right, okay. So, can I have exhibit number one, please? My art therapist is here from DRT Behavioral Services. Woo -woo! And so I don't want you guys to see exhibit number one, but ma'am, please hold up exhibit number one. Art therapist Alfreda Musa in the house, and she painted this. Can you guys see it? So, Vanna, go ahead and, and take it to all the folks, all the folks in the room. So you I actually got the biggest. For communication. Ready? Question number one. Name a part from the vagina. So I knew you were going to go. But hey, that's okay. That's the spot. So everyone, did you hear that? The clitoris is the spot. Now, true or false, everyone knows where the clitoris is located. Do you think people struggle with identifying the clitoris? Do you think a lot of, do you think people know where the most sensitive area is on the vagina? It's, it's yes and no, some people, like, look different. Yeah, everybody is different. Come on up here. <laughs> Please, make another trip. Who's that up there? What did it say? But this is, but this is a good point. So, okay. So, my friend here, please. Repeat what you just said. That it's a little difficult because why? Because some people like clitoris look different. Like all all vaginas don't look like that picture. You know? <laughs> so we need to bring the vagina here for the camera. It's bring it. It's behind me. Oh, here we go. We got it. You got. You're getting a shot of that. Okay. So did everyone see the vagina? Okay, so yes, every vagina is not the same. They're, they're all different. So this is a, a basic depiction of how it should look, um, but they can be different. However, the clitoris is always in a certain area of the vagina, right? Right. Where? At the top. <coughs> look under the top, it's not really at the top. Yeah, you have to dig for it? Not really deep. It's it's deep. Like it depends on the vagina. It depends on the vagina. So if you're trying to fumble in the dark and make love or have sex in the dark and not really see what's going on, so for different reasons we should turn on the lights, right? So number one, it enhances the experience. Turning on the lights, regardless of how you think you look. If someone is with you, they like you. Regardless of how you think you look, this is for men and for women, regardless of how you think you look, you should turn on the lights because you're sexy. We're all sexy in our own right. Right, guys, are you agree with me? No, I don't agree with that. turn on the lights is a whole different story. Say it again. When she turn on the lights is a whole different story. Yeah, it's a wreck. 
it enhances everything, right? You get to look in the eyes, you know, and actually see their face and the emotion, the connection. I need him to stop it. <laughs> Boy, extra. <laughs> He likes sex a little too much. <laughs> now, now that's another question. Is there too much sex? But no. so, Hell yeah. Is it? No, I just be greedy. So number one, turn on the lights, right? That's a part of foreplay. That's a part of enhancing the experience. Because the thing is this, if you're not comfortable with your body, with the lights off, the lights on, you're not gonna enjoy the experience. So you have to accept who you are and be comfortable. You know, if you're too skinny, you think you're too big, too short, too tall, whatever the case may be, you have to be comfortable with who you are because guys, am I wrong when I say, if you didn't like that person or you weren't attracted to them, you wouldn't be there with them, correct? That's so true. Mm -mm. A lot of facts. Mm -hmm. yeah. Yeah. I think that's, that's a complicated, it's a gray area. Exactly. So I want to stay away from yeah, we the complicated from, yeah. scenarios because I'm sure. Part, if, if like if somebody we dating, Yes, that, that applies all day. I mean, if you meet her in the club or meet him in the club and you guys just, you know, I guess that's a different scenario. I'm so, the one that's saying something. Right, so I'm talking about you're with someone. This is a person you're dating or this is you guys like one another and you're together somewhere, you know, and you're sharing an experience. Because when you share your body, men, when women share their bodies with you, it, that is something so serious. It's a soul experience. It's a, say it again. it's a soul experience. It's a soul experience, that's right. So the lights need to be on. Take off your clothing. Don't be embarrassed. Men and women, not just women, because there are a lot of guys, too, who don't like their bodies, who are embarrassed about the way they look. You have to have confidence. So sex is a mental game. A lot of times when people talk about their sexual experience not being what they wanted it to be or their sex life is not what they want it to be, most of those issues are due to mental uh, inabilities or mental issues. So a lot of times, just like when guys can't achieve an erection or something like that, it's mental. It could be because of medications and some other kind of problem, but it's usually mental. Women too, the same with low libido or sexual appetite. So let's get back to the vagina. Here it is, we, have, we got it on camera, right, the vagina? So we said the clit is at the top somewhere, right? Now you said, sir, that it's not just hanging out at the top, that you have to, you know. Sometimes it's a little under, depending on what he said. Right, the female person's in there. Okay, so let's name another, don't look at the picture. Don't look, you're looking, you're cheating. <laughs> he analyzing that thing. It's right. <laughs> I can't Thank read it, right? Yeah. So, name another part of the vagina. The, the inner the walls and the walls. I don't know if that's the actual terminology for it. I'll give you that, the walls. I'll give you that. I'll give you that. You said? The lips. The lips. Okay, the lips. So everyone knows them as the lips. Did you guys know that there's more than one type of lip on the vagina? Yeah. Yep. So this is this is what we have to get into because sometimes what happens, men think that sucking on one of those sets of lips is going to turn a woman on or enhance the experience. And most of the neurons or the nerve endings that cause the woman to feel good and have joy and maybe orgasm, where are most of the neurons located in our vaginas? By the hole, right? What did you say? If it's not the clip, then by the hole. Nah, you said by the hole, right? Well, I, Say what I, you thought said. Was, I thought we was talking about lips specifically. <laughs> I'm talking about the vagina. All right. Then. It's, Say it's, what you said. I said lips, but I know it's the clip. Right, right. So it's okay, because that's why we're doing this video. You said the lips. Most of the nerve endings are in the lips. And you said? I said the clitoris. Right. So most of your nerve endings are in the clitoris. So that's why it is the pleasure, the, ple the pleasure center, the go-to, the little man in the boat. That's why it's the go-to spot. It does not mean to ignore. Listen out there, Therapy Thursday world, it does not mean to ignore the rest of the vagina because there's still nerve endings in the other parts of the vagina, but it just so happens that there's more nerve endings here in the clitoris, AKA the clit. So, Sir, you said that nerve endings in the lips, we call those labia. There's two sets of labia or lips on the vagina. Right. And so we have the external lips. So those are the thicker 
They're on the outside. Right. You have to separate those so that you can see inside of the vagina, depending on a woman's anatomy, because some women, you don't have to separate. Some women have a clitoris that kind of sticks true. out of, that yeah. protrudes or sticks out of the labia. Um, so depending on a, a woman's anatomy, you may have to um, separate the lips a little bit. And then once you separate the labia majora, which is the thicker lip, and that lip is to protect our vaginas. It prevents bacteria from getting in, it prevents certain things from getting in and causing infection for us, so it's for protection. And we have hair also on our labia majora for, protect, for protection. Women who wax or get laser or something like that, you understand how, how, how hard it is to get rid of the hair. And that's because your body doesn't want to. It's a natural thing for us to keep hair so we can protect the vagina. So that's why it takes a lot for it to, for you to get rid of it for that hair to stop growing. So once you separate the labia majora, the thick lips, then the second set of lips are inside. And they come off of the clitoris, basically, so that there's a thin set of lips or labia. And those, they don't really cause any great pleasure. So that's why it's still stimulating if someone is touching and rubbing lightly and licking and things like that. And of course, every woman is different, so you have to figure out what pleases her. However, as we said, the essential, the main spot is up top, the clitoris. And so then there's other areas of the vagina. Um, someone mentioned the, I think someone mentioned the walls. You said the walls, okay. So yes, true enough, so uh, intercourse or um, penetration, um, it feels nice also, there's nerve endings there and it feels good to someone or to a woman when something is being inserted there. If it didn't, we wouldn't like penis or dildos or you know, cucumbers or eggplant, whatever it is that, <laughs> hot dogs, you know, whatever it is. Um, so we have the walls inside and so that actually brings up a question. When women orgasm, are they orgasm, are they having an orgasm because of their clitoris or is it because of the penetration? What do you guys think? You say the clit? I say both. You say both? Okay, it depends on the woman. Because some women cannot climax or have an orgasm from just penetration. Why so everyone's made differently. And like I told you, the nerve endings, the most, most nerve endings are here in the clitoris. So, and also, like I said, usually it's a mental thing. However, a lot of women cannot climax just from penetration, meaning a penis or an object being inserted into the vagina. So that's why I teach women, you may have to either him or you rub your clitoris, your clit, while he's penetrating. Or you figure out positions where you can actually apply pressure to your clitoris while he's penetrating. So for some women, um, doggy style or the man from behind is not, it doesn't work for them unless someone is rubbing on their clitoris or they're rubbing their clitoris. Missionary is the best position for women who cannot orgasm or climax just for penetration because missionary, if you're doing it correctly, you're applying some pressure there. And also the woman on top, writing. That can also lead to pressure on the clitoris, especially if she positions her legs a certain way. Right? Does the amount, like the amount, amount of time she has sex play a factor in that too? Like, um, with whether or not she climaxes? Yeah, like how she climaxes. Right. So some women climax quickly. Some women, it may take a while. If she, you know, maybe if you had sex that morning and she had five orgasms, so it might take a little longer to get back to that peak. Right. The next time later that night, if she masturbated that day and climaxed and, you know, so there's a lot of factors that play into that. If she's thinking about something at work or thinking about the kids because someone didn't pick them up or um, you guys haven't fed the kids yet or a bill didn't get paid, a lot of things factor into how long it takes us to climax. So with men, it's a little different because y'all can have <laughs> child and kids could be outside in the cold. <laughs> so it's a little different because we're, women are a little more mental. I, I'm, I know I'm being an extreme with the. <laughs> no, I feel like that's the example. Like that. yeah, However, like yeah. On a bad day, it's bad. Yeah. yeah. Keep it 100. You what? I'm telling them to keep it 100. Yeah. 
We do know, though, that um, when you compare women who are aclimactic, meaning cannot climax, to men who cannot climax or have an orgasm, there's more women who endure not being able to have an orgasm than there are men. There are some men who... No, I was like that in high school. You were like what, sir? In high school, like, I, it used to take me a long time to know. Look, I heard you say it Thursday, so I... Oh, like what, sir? In high school, what happened? No, I'm saying in high school, it used to take me a long time to know. To nut, like a long time, like hours. How long? Hours sometimes. <laughs> but sometimes it'd be so bad, like I just did. You just wouldn't? Yeah. So, how old were you the first time you were able to climax and ejaculate? Well, like I start, because I used to masturbate, so I used to. How long? How old were you when you started masturbating? Probably like 12, 13. Okay. You know what I'm saying? Typical yeah. age, yeah. Like, yeah. So, 12, 13. I didn't have a problem. Yeah, so. I didn't have a problem having an orgasm if I masturbated. You like when, when I was having sex, it just used to, I used to have sex like endless. You like masturbating yeah. more than sex, big. No, I didn't. <laughs> <laughs> well, as an aside, some men, some men will say that they like to masturbate, you know, before having uh, intercourse with their lady because they know exactly what to do. They're gonna grab it in a certain way. They're gonna position their hand. Right. And they're going to do exactly what they need to be done. So that's why, ladies, you have to ask your mate, your partner, questions. Does this feel good? You lick it, you rub it, what feels good here? And you find the point. Just like we have a very sensitive spot, men have a sensitive spot or sensitive spots on their penis. So you have to learn. For most men, there is a pleasure center. But I won't give that away today on their Thursday. <laughs> You don't need to know? No, no, I don't want to know. <laughs> you don't want to know? Well, let's go back to, so how old were you the first time you climaxed and you ejaculated? I was like 12, 13. From masturbation? Yeah. But from intercourse? From intercourse, like when I got like, oh, like I was like maybe like 18, 19. Like that's when I started being able to like, like bust my regular. You get what I'm saying? But it, it still would take time, but like it wasn't as bad as like when I first started having sex. Do you remember when that was happening? Did you have a full erection when you were having intercourse sex? You were fully erect? Yeah. Yeah. Okay. The reason why I ask is because the system that controls um, a man's erection and being able to ejaculate is kind of the same nerve system. We call it pointing and shooting. So, and it could just be that it took a, a longer amount of time for your nerves to finish developing to the point of you having satisfaction from intercourse right. and being able to ejaculate. And again, it could have been something mental. Right. Now, I used to always wonder why. You get what I'm saying? Because I, I would be with girls and I'd just be like a jackrabbit just like all day. <laughs> You know what I'm saying? Right. To the point where, like, after a while, you get bored because you like it's, it's just because you can't finish. Right. You don't get that finish. the dessert right. at the end. Right. Okay. Wow. So, alrighty. Now. What about Belair? What's that? What about Belair? Belair. What was that? Oh. What do you want to know about oh, Belair? They want to know. They want to know. Yeah. Yeah, you <laughs> Do you want to know how old he was when he ejaculated the first time? Sure enough, you tell me. I don't know what the question is. Okay, well, let's get back to, so, are you guys comfortable comfortable with the vagina? Of course. Yes, I'm very comfortable. Do you think at, at certain points were you targeting other parts of the vagina instead of the clitoris? Can you admit freely? Yeah. Okay. You were too? Do you think a lot of men target other parts of the vagina besides the clitoris? You just try yeah, because they don't know. Because they don't know. Yeah, you just See? try going for yourself. Being selfish. But some this people don't care to know either too. Some was, don't care to know? Yeah, like when I was younger, I didn't really, when I was younger, I didn't really, like it wasn't about me. To her when I was like first started having sex, it was about me. So we've just concluded that most men are not familiar with the vagina. Can I get can I get the camera on the vagina again, please? Most men are not comfortable with the vagina. They're not familiar with the different parts of the vagina, and it's important so that way they know where to go, or you guys know where to go when you're pleasing your your woman. So we talked about all of these areas. This is, don't ignore. I'm not suggesting that you ignore these other parts of the vagina because there's still nerve endings there. It still feels nice to us. 
Um, it's still pleasing to us. It still helps. Touching it, stroking it, uh, whatever it is that your that your woman likes. Not saying to ignore it. However, if you're trying to go for the gusto and you want her to climax and you want to take it, make a you know a home run, take her home, whatever, you want to go right here. Now, that's a whole nother session to discuss how you engage the clitoris, right? Because some men know exactly where it's located, but they don't know what to do with it, right? Or they get there and you can tell there's no plan. There's no plan. They're just there. You're trying to figure it out. Right, he's trying to just figure that thing out. If you know where it is and you don't have a plan, you're in trouble. It's just like not knowing. So you have to kind of, you got to move with her body. You got to pay attention to how she's receiving you and how she's responding to you. Um, and you have to know what to do with this. Someone commented on my post today and said he does ABCs. And I've heard that on movies before. Fathers will teach their sons, well, just do your ABCs and then that'll do it. But So how erratic is that, right? So if you're drawing an A, then a B, then a C, then a D. And the thing that's, uh, for a lot of people, not just uh, women but men too, the thing that helps when you're physically stimulating someone is to get to a point where you're doing the same movement over and over and over, as long as it feels good, right? Because let's say, you're making, uh, I don't know, an I, right? So down and dot, or I don't know, or an O. Maybe you're doing an O, and then you switch it up, and then you're trying to make a J and a K, and you're gonna throw some things off if she's really feeling that O. Do you understand what I'm saying? What did you say? Every time. No, of course. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Right? But do, do you guys understand what I'm saying about once you hit the spot and you're doing the same thing over and over and it feels good, that's what's going con the consistency of doing the same movement over and over. If you switch it up and you're doing different things, you may lose her. She may lose it, right? Did you ever have someone say, why did you stop? Right. Yep. Right? It's a difference from us. Like, it's a difference from us. Like, like with us, you can get right back to it. And with her, she be like, no, nah, that's a wrap. Like, yeah. That's it. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, once they turned off, they turned off. Once women are turned off, they're turned off. Well, ladies or women have to understand the orgasm is just as good as for them as it is for him. So don't get turned off because your happy ending is like his happy ending, right? right. You gotta remember what that feels like. The best feeling in the world is what? What do you guys think the best feeling in the world is? Is, it, it, is it eating chocolate? Is it eating, it's drinking? It's between eating food and then going to the bed. An orgasm. <laughs> Nothing is more powerful than a climax. Than an orgasm. You can't think of anything more powerful and, and intense. There's nothing that feels that way. And so that's why we teach this and we talk about it. So, all right, so you guys admit it. Most men don't know where to go. They do all this other stuff first and they don't realize this is the, the point where they need to be. So listen, Therapy Thursday, you gotta perfect your technique. This is part one of the Clitoris Chronicles. This is not the only thing that we need. We need a lot more and I'll teach you that too, but this will up your game in the bedroom because a lot of you are fumbling. Thanks for joining me, guys. It's Dr. Delvina, and remember, brain love! Brain love!